for the whip, Ted. Yeah. Whose idea was that? Is uh, that mine? No, uh, probably not. Maybe I uh, thought, of, uh, thought of some persons that needed to be whipped. A bit. Okay, I was thinking, I was feeling so rotten at the time that, uh, and the lyrics were so self uh, hard on myself that uh, the whip was for that. I, I don't even remember whose idea it was. Oh, no, I can't, can't remember. Can't remember. Uh, what I can actually say is it pretty much destroyed the song because later in the song we have a weak strike on every like snare drum yeah, on yeah. the parts and I'm like every time that happens and I listen to it it's like oh, no why <laughs> but why did we do it that way anyway this drum beat is taken directly from I think the Antichrist song with destruction 1985 and no one ever noticed. I, li I listened to that song yesterday actually. Oh, okay. Hey, hey, it's a small nerd yeah. for a small world. That's a. There's a little It has to be said, it's uh, some years since I heard this album. And I heard it last week to, because I'm good to choose and wanted to, to read up on it here and listen up on it. I, I remember you putting up your drum set when we came in studio to record Ravishing Grimness and uh, the engineer was uh, keeping an eye on you because he wondered what the hell this is going to be like mm -hmm. this is a drum kit and uh, uh, you know he waited out for, for some, uh, some time and then he suddenly had to ask you are you really going to use this? it was uh, you had one symbol that was cracked and that's it and your uh, right single, of course. And uh, probably just a uh, floor tone. Well, I decided to do on this album, the drumming on this album should, was supposed to be not my usual style of liveliness, but more or less following uh, some sort of black metal ideal of simpleness, not doing anything fancy. Um, which leads me to the sound of this complete album because it seems like the sound here works better with your more emotional riffs actually on this mm. album and on my black and roll stuff I don't think the sound goes too well as something that's not really communicating with the drums there even though if I listen to the drums and analyze the drums here it's nothing wrong at all it's just basically what I wanted yeah but still something is uh, not really working like it used to do strangely enough on the under the moon stuff for instance Thinks it's crazy sound, but it still works. It works better than this. At least on my songs on this album, this, the sound is not what it's supposed to be like. It's not meshing. I never thought about that actually. Yeah. Well, I never did too uh, either. But uh, when I listened to it last week, it was suddenly clear. To me. Um, but maybe there's something with the bass guitar here. Um, that doesn't communicate with the drums or something. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it was a lot of focus on the on the guitars and the guitars sound well together. And the, but it's kind of a wall with the guitars too. And it's a, it was a, for the first time in many many years we went to a professional studio. Yeah. The most professional sort of that we we've been to. And, yeah, that's right. And it was 1999. Yeah. Yeah, this is a. Uh, I feel this album is like uh, probably our album that has the most, you know, is like uh, long roads all the way. You know, more like a long desert roads feeling. I agree. You have uh, a lot of three, three, four bit riffs on this, which you actually didn't used to have. Uh, before, like in oh yeah, yeah, but you started sort of um, a lot of this style on your songs on this album can be heard uh, on the Total Death album a little bit, yeah. but uh, you did this way better on, on this album. Uh, and I on this album I started the black and roll stuff, which will soon be heard. Yeah, I like the uh, the uh, the you know the we probably told them that we have the. Like the, the bass drum has to be like boom. Yeah, but it's I don't know. It's it's 
I can analyze the drums here, for instance, right now, in the double bass, and I love the sound. But there's still something not communicating very directly with the guitars. Uh, there's like there's a gap in between that hasn't been fulfilled. I don't know, but uh, I still say this is uh, album has uh, way better songs in it than uh, than uh, a couple of other albums. Yeah, it's like uh, the uh, old traditional, uh, more of the black metal. Uh. Okay, so this is this is my song. This is Fenris talking. Hi, hi. This is the black and roll stuff, which we basically sort of were we were sniffing at this with um, Sapphires. On um, Sapphires did at least half uh, of. Uh, in the Shadow of the Horns song back in 91 and then in 92 did the uh, Inedit Deep Scoobish Palm which, Palm which also had some black and roll elements in yeah. it um, and I'm thinking where does this black and roll thing come from because I started making riffs like this more and more the, the years after, after this I was actually leaning and relying on this sound to, to work for me so, where does it come from? Is it Celtic Frost? Uh, yeah, I would say like more like uh, probably probably something like something that. Or early Mal Malfred, I don't yeah, Malfred. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know the because this is after when when I did more songs like this, like in two thousand four, Guy Cole uh, started saying that Dark Room was the motorhead of uh, of black metal because of this sort of riffs yeah. here. But as I said, I think the sounds um, that we chose for this album works better with uh, uh, a lot of tense riff than if they don't mind rock and roll. But I think many people might disagree. I think uh, probably I disagree a bit because uh, I don't know. I think it, uh, this kind of style also suits this album. Uh, but it's very difficult to. Uh, yeah, I'm starting to think. What do, what do I want here? What do I want more of? What do I want less of? It works fine right now, but maybe it's because I'm on my second gear. I don't know. <laughs> oh yeah, of course. Um, it's more uh, Headhammer inspired than... Uh, yep. Than Celtic Cross, actually. Yeah. I'm waiting for the next trip. <laughs> the player uh, recorder actually peaks when you ejaculated the beer. <laughs> oh, this is a good move. It's crazy. This. Yeah, definitely more uh, more Hellhammer uh, style. I did just two songs on this album, and this is the most coherent one, the best one I did for this album. Now that's the Celtic Cross. So we recorded in summer. Yes. We, every time we went to some sort of real studio, it seemed to be Four first times, like uh, with Blazing Northern Sky. Well, the Salsa Journey 2 was in the summer. Uh, yeah. Blazing Northern Sky was in the summer. And the film was also summer, definitely. Yeah, and then we didn't really go to Pro Studio until 1999 here with Ravish and Greenness, was in the summer. And then was Play Wielder in 2001, was in the summer. So then, on the next album again, Hate Them, which was like again black cover and. Uh, a lot of people have been saying in hindsight that that was sort of like we were returning a bit to black metal, but basically I'm just thinking that a lot of people couldn't they couldn't dig the album uh, art for Play Wheeler album. They were just like thrown off completely. Don't know what happened, but many people have said that like I hate them. It's uh, it's a super album comeback for us. But yeah. this was basically the comeback album 
for uh, yeah, for absolutely, us absolutely. We've been taking a recording. We didn't record for since '96, so it was three yeah. years without yeah, recording yeah, yeah. until we did yeah. this. And uh, probably a lot of uh, private matters as well uh, did uh, at least play a part in it for my sake. So, yeah, uh, not between us, but uh, private life in general. Yeah. In general, snooze. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With this riff here, I thought I was taking big, big, grand chances because the black metal scene um, in 1999 did not sound like this. <laughs> <but> the, <laughs> it was more operatic. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. <laughs> and shit. So now it's your song again. Can you uh, talk about your song? I'll, I'll, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is, I'm so excited now. <laughs> no, it's, uh... Oh, this is a beautiful riff, but really emotional. Yeah. It's a bit like what black metal sounds like in 1991. Yeah. But I, but. Maybe I just had in general sore feelings. I don't know. Uh, Why would you? Well, I didn't. I don't know. No, I'm actually. <laughs> this is one of the favorites I have on this album, and it works yeah. so well with the drums yeah. uh, for me. But you're saying that okay, my black and roll stuff works better with the sound. I think this is this is the sound that we needed for this week. Yeah. Great vocals to it. Maybe I was depressed when making it because I was uh, seeing that I was soon to be 30 years old. Maybe. I didn't know that was a barrier for you. No, it did. Uh... <laughs> you know, this riff right here, I could never really understand it. <laughs> no. Not even now, uh, after this recording, I'm still going like, what? It's got some kind of strange. Well, that's pressure. the problem, yeah, because I have, of course, some kind of. You know, rhythm in you know in my body, and when I when I make a riff, I know the rhythm, but I don't count as your drummers do, you know, because you oh, you, you like count too much. much. It's math, dude. And I suck at math, but yeah. being a drummer, you just have to deal with the bars and everything. I mean, like both the drinking kind of bars, <laughs> the physical <Yeah>. bars. <laughs> We should have won an Oscar for this trip. I remember I, I was looking, uh, you know, I, I don't usually see myself in mirrors, but when I, I remember the day I was turning 30, I took a look in the mirror and I said to myself, no, it's alright. So fucking what? And then you made this song? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no, this was not. Yeah, I think. Uh, oh, yeah, the claws of time, that's what it's called. Yeah. This is more of the 3 4, uh, which again, like. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. And uh, when we're done with this recording, uh, we are of course uh, taking our skateboards with us and uh, no. go to the skateboard ramp up there and uh, do some hand plants. <laughs> I don't even know what that is, dude. <laughs> Radical! Well, it's uh, probably the easiest way for me at least to uh, break all my bones. How can a small place like you're living now with only 329 Inhibitors have a skate ramp at all? I don't know. That should be in Guinness Record Book. <laughs> Guinness Book of Record? Yeah. Guinness Record Book? <laughs> <laughs> the Book of Guinness. <laughs> <laughs> It's just not like one riff you have in this 3-4 uh, beat, it's many, many on this album, also yeah. on Playwheel. And that always throws me off because I'm thinking that's always like a death metal beat, because death metal 
was the first metal style that had a lot of 3-4 in it. So I was thinking, I was thinking when you showed me this at rehearsal before the before the album, we went to the studio, we yeah. rehearsed for this album. And then I was thinking, there's something reminding me of Immortal or something. Uh, I, I don't know. I because you know, hell, this is secret. Uh, I never know where Ted gets the influences from. So I never know when he comes up with a riff, I'm clueless. <laughs> Yeah. And it still puzzles me, like why all these riffs in, in this beat and uh, in this style? And uh, yeah. what, what Ted usually tells me, it's just like, no, that's just what I'm making. So, okay. Yeah. I don't know, it's, it's like... Uh, Do you have these open chords? I love yeah. that. You should use that. Uh, these days for the heavy metal riffs. Like, like we listened to Metal Inquisitor before and they had the, yeah. these open chords like that's fantastic. Use it in 4-4 four, four beats and it's gonna sound like free freedom itself. This album is like, I mean, the, I think the, the, the atmosphere is more like uh, the thing here. And, uh, with the Except for my songs which totally breaks the atmosphere. Oh, uh, well, it would be better if you just had all the songs, probably. Oh, I don't know, but... Oh. Really great with the boom and bass drums. I was so yeah. happy, but they still don't really communicate with the guitar sound so, so well. Maybe it was... Maybe it had, like... Some people have said, like, the sound is not macro enough. Maybe they have some points with that. Maybe it's a little bit too clear. But I was fine with it. We yeah. just wanted to make a really... Uh, not polished or anything, but like you could hear everything that was going on. Yeah, yeah. Because we've done so many albums where you couldn't. And again, this drumming I did, which was, was like really primitive drumming, I was not going to do any tweaks or anything like no. that. So I think that this nice. is one of the, the things as well that uh, we never used more than like five, six days in the studio with, with recording and mixing. and. Uh, I think uh, that's the way to go. Huh? That was the situation up there. We could have used just two, three days on, on this. Yeah. Probably get a more fucked up sound. Like that. yeah. That's that's just contra historical uh, things to be thinking about. The album is sounds like this, and that's what we talked about. Oh, only six songs in the entire album, so that was side A, yep. and now side B. And uh, you never know what, uh, you know, when, you know, when you're going to like a prof professional studio like this, uh, you're going to work with a new guy, probably, and uh, you never know what kind of things he are thinking about. What kind of microphones am I going to use for, for the bass drums now, or what, what do you, you know? So there's a lot of coincidence, and I think that's, uh, that's the good thing about being a recording artist, that you can actually uh, let things happen by coincidence, and uh, it will be more interesting is if a lot of more bands do that, uh, you know, take chances, I think that's the, that's the thing that uh, metal is about, you know? So, I don't even have a clue, so no, it's all chances yeah. with me. Yeah. I have no clue. But did we bring any albums for for the studio people that they should listen to and uh, for this album, like we did for Under Funeral Moon? And I Rest think we did actually on this album. But I can't remember what album that was. No, I, uh, because you brought the album uh, most likely. What the hell could that have been? Uh. Not far back. <laughs> well, yeah. I'm clueless if that's the most logical one. Sting! No, no, no. <laughs> the sting, that should not be. <laughs> Actually, on the first riff on this song, mm. you started out the riff as a black and roll riff. So 
Oh, it yeah. sounds like one of my songs, but then the riff just goes on to another part, which is something else than black and roll, and then goes on. Yeah. Third part of the riff is something completely different. You're pretty much maximizing the riff, uh, riffs uh, a lot of times here. Yeah. It was very creative. And I was like, oh fuck, this is so complicated for me. I was uh, I was actually sitting underground when making this album, like a cellar that uh, smelled a bit rotten. In a house. I remember I, that smell. Yeah, uh, in a house that I rented, and they said it was uh, two living rooms downstairs, and it was just two claustrophobic rooms. That I know. Shit. I was there on holiday. Yeah. We jammed yeah. a little bit. Yeah, yeah. oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Not like Jimmy Hendrix, I suppose. Uh, I think you were just showing me some riffs or something. Uh. I think, you know, I've done some of this. Uh, oh yeah? What's happening there? Complete change. The vocal sound is quite good actually. Yeah, I know. Which is supposed to sound like some <coughs> battery stuff. No. But for for some reason it really doesn't. Again, as with the sound being maybe not necro enough or something. Uh -huh. Because this is battery. Sideburns boys. I remember I had this, uh, my old trusty Gibson Explorer uh, used for 10 years. You know. With the aggressive T500 microphones on the, on the. Yeah, it's all great to me, just keep talking. <laughs> I had my yeah. drum kit of uh, Rottenness. Even more battery. Yeah. You just can't make it happen. Oh, oh. Wow. <laughs> Fancy. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to battery uh, up your yeah. now with the drum beat. 100% battery drum beat. But it's still. Oh. Yeah. With the open chords again at the end of the video. Yeah. I fucking love that! Hmm. I never, I never, uh, never uh, thought about that. You know what? You yeah. could never hear that at the rehearsals. Mm. And I just listened to yeah. the final public and wow, I do all that open chord riff stuff. I love that. There seems to be some gap between the guitars yeah. and the drums. Like the bass doesn't really fit. Yeah, well. yeah, yeah. It's both barren and clean. There is always a fine balance between, you know, when you're mixing an album, doing the, uh, you know, the, the the power, you know, like between the um, guitars and drums, you know. It's Some a fine line. I know, sometimes it just works completely. Yeah. Oh, on this song we just fade in a yeah, very strange way. Yeah. yeah. That's right. Because it has some thing to do with the vacuum and the void and it just is running all... Yeah. It just disappears. Probably some Germans that didn't like that. <laughs> yeah, I got an accusation once that we released Goat Lord album just because of you that we're going to make money. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Goat Lord is the best selling motherfucker ever! <laughs> That's one of our best albums, like, uh, yeah. 
frustration why some mm. how hungry we were we were yeah. actually hungry doing it oh, yeah. but we wanted to play primitive black metal uh, even though we were making the goldlord material but goldlord is totally on oh, this album there you go yeah there we go Did and like it, you know, it was fun these days because this was also recorded with tapes, you know, old tapes. Yeah, we used and, tapes. And, 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 and you have to mix all the things live, so we all used to stand there with with our fingers. <laughs> This is a rubbish in Greenland song, right? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that was my favorite on this album. The riff that you... This is a 3-4 riff mm. again. I don't understand why you had it, but then you come up with this. Which is oh, yeah. so incredibly great 90s black metal riff. I love this fucking riff. Go Ted, go! <laughs> Oh, it just embarrassing me. <laughs> this sounds so great with that like, snare on it. Too. Those few riffs that you have in 4-4 four, four there and it's melodic like this, but still with this snare drum. Love that. But uh, could, you, could you ever think about this album with a totally different, you know, like drum sound or anything? I mean, no, we can't do that. No, the, the, the many others yeah. probably can. Yeah, the, I mean uh, the way the way it sounds and, and the way you play here is is uh, exactly what it should be. Huh? Yeah, at least on this riff, it's totally killer. It's hundred percent. Oh, the bass could go higher. Huh? Yeah, I know. This is uh, well, yeah, probably playing a different bass line or something. Yeah, because you change between yeah. an octave or a yeah. mm -hmm. Because you are uh, the crown achievement of this album, is the uh, title song. I think also, you know, uh, Burson has played a part in, uh, in some of the, like, yeah, you know, the way you want uh, a song to feel like, you know, like uh, Okay. Because uh, Burson always been like about uh, the... Uh, yeah, and I'm playing drums like uh, like Varg uh, would do on the early albums mm -hmm. here. Like just straightforward, just like yeah. not doing anything fancy at all. So yeah, this is, this is probably the riff that you made that's... I would, I would, Capture I would, the person feeling. Yeah, I would, I would pursue so well. Yeah. Thank you, Mark. <laughs> yeah. And then, also, soon comes the riff that you made that the first time I heard it, I was thinking this is a bell riff. We never had bell riffs in Dark Moon, but it needed a bell. It's more cowbell. Yeah. <laughs> but what's funny, and I was thinking, you should see the part now or soon when that riff starts. I can't hear the start of the riffs, and that tells me there's something strange with the whole guitar recording. Check it out. You just barely hear it until the other guitar comes in. Shouldn't that have been more clear? Isn't there something strange? Fantastic song. How did we get the bell sounds to be that cool? Uh, or icy cold? I think we took uh, like a more happy bell and we did tweak it. Maybe it's it. <laughs> Yeah, we, we tweaked it like going slower and everything. Narco, we make it neckle. Yeah. It's like Sapphire's once said, you know, in the studio, we should have like a button that says neckle on and just push it. <laughs> because he, <laughs> he wasn't really a, you know, a fan too, of the old, you know, thing. Yeah. Too many buttons to push to make it neckle. Yeah. We should just have one. Yeah. Oh yeah, this is the 
We were inspired by from the 80s, like no. pretty much Bathory and stuff. And, and then when someone does a riff like this, I I have to just break down and say, okay, it's a copy band, but when it's this good, like a riff like this, it holds my respect because this is like really the essence of not really complicated riff, yeah. but it's still a new riff in that genre. So you did it, dude. <laughs> oh, thanks. Another, it, uh, another, uh, it's not easy to do this sort of riffs uh, without complicating the matter. I'm, I'm just, just a battery. Oh yeah. Okay. What are we going to do then? Let it roll. Yeah. Maybe we have to take the last song just like. We should take the. Uh, is by it, itself. It's possible to take the last song. Won't this recorder simply just shut down completely when the battery is full? Yeah, exactly. So this will be exciting, boys and girls. Will it be a live take? Or will we have to take the last song by itself in another take? Time will show. I think it probably will. It'll go all the way. Yeah. Oh, just a hard working motherfucker that okay, are then, yeah no the, you know making making riffs as uh, you know we both are uh, because it's fun so this oh, yeah. song uh, is mine it's the last one so I got two riffs that are functioning and another one that's not functioning I don't know why we put it on uh, this is pretty much first battery style. When you can hear the riff, it's like the first battery. But unfortunately I have to do some double bass drums on it that I shouldn't have done. It's trying to rock up the riff. I just should have done with some. You know, this is so uh, this is so uh, long time ago actually uh I'm not sure if it's your song actually. And that tells us that. Uh... No, it's my song. Oh, yeah? I think so. Uh... No, wait! Kind of, uh, I don't know. I think I had two songs on Ravishing and one song yeah. I played with, so this must be my other song. And, uh, I think you just had uh, probably one song on the song. Shit! Uh, because this is actually sounding a lot like your typical kind yeah. of but, uh, <laughs> We don't have a cover, we can't check this. No. <laughs> we should have done this before yeah. starting to record. Yeah. <laughs> very, so, very battery, right? Yeah, but this is sort of... I could have made this is easily my kind of... I remember I was. Uh, or maybe both of us. I think you you th you made two songs on Playbill and you did one on uh, Ravishing. Well, 
I only remember my one song. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, no, yeah. It was Sin Origin. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, now it says Battery Low. Oh, yeah. As long as it doesn't erase our entire life. Oh, well, no. So this turned out to be a more nervous uh, session than we thought it was. Oh, yeah. We're thinking about the battery. But anyway, uh, I think this... Um I'm going to be Tante Sophie and say, uh, why don't you check the battery level? Uh, I am... Uh, <laughs> I'm so proud of this one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, I think here comes the last riff from the yeah. uh, well, in a few seconds. I mean, uh, because I remember, because this is probably, well, what I thought when we did this album and many years after, that this is actually the, the song and the lyric that represents Darth Vader very well in many, many, many ways. You know, it's like uh, you gather the essence of the what, what we used to do. You know? Yeah. Be because the I, abuse. I, you know, yeah, the, I mean the, the lyrics on this one is is uh, is. Uh, it's shrouded in mystery, and yeah. we won't reveal it. This part here. This sort of riff that we used to do back in the day. Yeah. Like early nineties. I don't understand. When I was listening to it, I was thinking, this is my song, why did I put this riff here? I should have put more rock and roll here. So it will be really interesting to see afterwards, uh, boys and girls, when we go check the cover, yeah. we will find out whose song this is. <laughs> yeah. Right now, I'm still thinking maybe it's mine, but I'm having doubts. Ted thinks it's his song. I could, I could, I could be <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> But what about this like you said? Yeah. Is that typical of me? Probably not. It's basically that must have been inspired by some blood fire death stuff. Okay, well we made I do think that. we should do this more often <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thanks man. <laughs> well play wheelers up next. Yeah. So I guess we'll do that. And take another bus trip up here and I can uh, deduct my t uh, bus ticket on the tax. <laughs> Bye-bye!